Yeah. All right. So good morning. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for connecting um, for our class. Um, we'd be moving forward with what we've been learning so far. Um, we are into the next week of our uh, of our sessions in in class, and the last time we were looking at um, making the choice, and there were a couple of questions that came about. Um, uh, so, would anyone in maybe in a couple of sentences would like to give um, you know a gist of what we covered the last week? Anybody in a few sentences? Hello, ma'am. Can I speak? Hello, Maxon. Yes, yes, please go ahead. I think we will look on compatibility realms when you're making a choice on the life partner. Being spiritual comp compatibility, emotional and intellectual compatibility, physical compatibility, and the compatibility in life is calling. Also, we look on watching warning signs about the, when we are when we are choosing the life partner such as the signs of immaturity lack of preparation character weakness and the parental dependencies this is made a few thank you thank you thank you so much maxon thank you Great. So um, Maxon covered uh, some realms of compatibility. We looked at what compatibility was. We said it was a place of agreement. Um, we said we, we look at four realms of compatibility, being physical, intellectual, emotional, um, uh, in, in one's calling, as well as spiritual compatibility. We also looked at certain warning signs. We did um, look at the the question, uh, is there an appointed one, one and only appointed one? We were also talking about discerning God's wisdom and doing uh, the seeking as you discern God's wisdom. And that's where we stopped. So we, we take it on from there. Um, for your reference, I'm at uh, page uh, 32 of the uh, of the book and uh, if you'd like to follow along it would be great if you can do so so the last time we were looking at um, you know making the decision when we said that uh, you know when we were looking at it in relation to the question uh, is there this one an appointed one only and we were we were looking at uh, making the decision um, in light of a couple of factors. So when you make a decision, what are some of the factors that you look at, which is what we, we did look at. We said there's a combination of the of following what God's word says. Um, there is uh, the leading of the Holy Spirit, the prompting of the Holy Spirit, and the wisdom and uh, judgment, wisdom and counsel that you can uh, get, godly counsel that you can get. So when we look at how, how do we discern God's guidance? Now, discerning God's guidance in any issue, scripture does show us and it teaches us, gives us very many scriptures of how we can know and understand the will of God um, or, the, or what he directs or guides us to do. And uh, there, are, uh, there are scriptures to base our understanding of how we discern it. So specifically two things, and I want to open up uh, some scripture. Uh, to start with is uh, Romans 12, 2, a very familiar verse for all of us which says, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So as we discern God's wisdom, we are, um, we, we are looking at, at having a renewed mind. So what, what does being renewed in our mind really uh, mean? What does it, what does it consider? So it is to a, it is to be able to understand, um, uh, uh, able to reason, uh, 
and to understand the direction that God is giving that that is showing you, right? So if it is a if it is if it is a choice of a partner, that's that's the case that we are talking about, is to be able to reason through, to understand, to to ask questions. Um, and to see if that is in light of what scripture has uh, has shown and it has taught taught us and whether this reasoning these uh, the, the thinking through is as per the will of god is as per how god has directed us so that's what renewing of mind means it's also thinking through using your wisdom god given wisdom the understanding that you have or the revelation that you may have through his word or through his spirit so we we're looking at discerning god's wisdom first of all through the renewed mind as well as the uh, power of the of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit does teach us, does prompt us um, uh, in in making those decisions, and and we see that in Colossians uh, one three, where it says, um, "We ask God to fill you with the knowledge of His will, with all the wisdom and understanding that His Spirit gives." So He is the source of wisdom. He is the source of understanding. He is the source of direction. So as we listen to the Holy Spirit um, al alongside with renewing your mind is when um, you know you can discern God's guidance and move ahead in the choices that you make. So when you discern God's guidance, there are certain things that that need that we recommend as you as you um, uh, as you follow through that to to consider. So uh, uh, and, and this is what we are also talking about, you know, renewing your mind is using the wisdom God has given you. So first and foremost, um, if, you, if, we rem if you remember in the last chapter, we spoke about expectations, right? Writing down expectations about what you are looking for in a partner. So as you're making that choice, finding out first and foremost, does this person have the qualities and the traits that I'm looking for? Or that are important to me. So, to have that in place is important to make uh, a good decision. Uh, the second question that you would ask is since we did go into the realms of uh, compatibility, um, what are. Someone is waiting to be let in? Yes, ma'am, the, they are all waiting, they're called. Okay, I think um, if, uh, all right. Um, okay, when usually when people do, uh, may just, uh, uh, you know, just uh, notice here that, you know, if there are multiple people joining in, of sometimes it doesn't uh, automatically admit to you. So if that happens, please try once again. Okay, there, yeah. So please try once again. And uh, you know it can be admitted. It's because there may be multiple people trying to come and enter at the meeting at the same time. So if you are not in, just try a couple of minutes later, and uh, we can uh, uh, and, and you can join in. Okay. So we are at page uh, um, we are at page thirty uh, three right now. We are at page 33. Yeah, so the, the things that we need to also consider is, is there compatibility in the four areas uh, that we did talk about? Um, the Another question we need to consider is, is there has there been adequate preparation? Uh, those seven areas of preparation that we were looking at, um, has there been adequate preparation? Uh, are there any warning signs that have not been addressed? Are, are there any specific aspects that seem to be uh, coming in as red flags. Uh, is there a leading of the Holy Spirit to make the choice? Do you have God's leading, prompting the peace uh, of making this choice? Um, any are there any kind of external indicators where you know that God is working? You know, are you seeing God's hand working through uh, through situations outside of uh, of maybe? whatever you're thinking of or whatever you have written down or whatever there is an uh, expectation that's there. Is this mutual? Is this something that uh, is agreeable to both sides, or to both partners? Um, is there also support, uh, approval from the family, from the parents? Um, so we, we do see that this may not be possible in all situations, um, maybe especially in times when um, they do not agree to maybe to faith issues, you know, um, 
if if that is so we do realize that this is this probably is not a possible uh, place where you may get support and approval from parents but something to consider and lastly is there support from your spiritual mentors uh, who overlook your life so these are certain um, uh, you know certain mm -hmm. factors that you can look into when you're looking into uh, into um, choosing and and needing to discern God's wisdom for that, not just um, uh, yeah, not just uh, um, uh, you know, just just looking at these factors, but being led by the power of the Holy Spirit as well as uh, you know, operating of the renewed mind with wisdom and counsel. Uh, yes, Charles, I think you had a question. Yes, um, like um, the approval of parents. I asked you, Pastor, to shed more light, though we are seeking God's guidance, but uh, when the parents are not in agreement with what you believe and the faith you have in Christ, for both of you who are going to marry, and the, you want to follow culture. You, you want to, to fulfill the culture that the parents must approve. How do you do? Do you disobey the parents, and you you go with the lady, or the 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 husband? Um, just an inquiry. Thank you. Can you hear me now? We can hear you, Charles. I think uh, Pastor's gone on mute. So you had had the question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was on mute. Sorry. Yeah, Charles. Yes, I heard your question. I heard your question. Okay. If I've missed out any question, uh, you could just please put that up on chat. Okay. So I'd like to respond um, with. Um, with certain examples, uh, th this may not be applicable to all cases. I think every situation, every instance may be very different in the way that it presents itself. Um, so there are times when the young people who are to be married, who have decided um, and you know who are both believers and believe that God's guided them into the decision where, wherein there is a um, family who hasn't agreed. There are times that couples do wait um, you know for a period of time till they can continue conversations with their families, um, wait for them to um, uh, agree or to or to have them, bless the couple. So I know of situations where couples have waited for a year and two, just waiting for the parents to come to an agreement. So that's been a, a case like that. There have been times when people have waited, maybe have not found an agreement, um, but have informed parents that they, they are going to go ahead and uh, uh, um, get married with the help and support of uh, the spiritual mentors. In those times, what is most needed is that there is, um, uh, is, is a sense of in the relationship, there isn't strain in the relationship between the parents. So there is a lot of effort that is put in treating them with kindness and with love and with patience and, um, you know, uh, just trying your best to work in peace with the parents who may be unsupportive of the decision of marrying a believer. Uh, the the third instance, um, as far as I can remember, yeah, is, is when um, couples do seek help and support from the leadership in the church 
to discuss with their parents um, and to open the conversation out to understand their um, apprehensions of the marriage or apprehensions about what really is it that they find hard to um, uh, consider in the marriage. So different instances, but these are possibilities that, that can happen. So um, I think what, what we first of all need to look at is to work difficult decisions in peace uh, as well as you know to to work in such a way that say I, I think um, specifically in our culture uh, Charles um, the family is very deeply integrated um, into the life of a couple also so to completely detach away from a family uh, uh, has a lot of uh, you know, a lot of repercussions to it in the sense of support, in the sense of, uh, you know, feelings of, of oneness and togetherness. So in the culture, in largely in the culture that we may be in, um, a lot of times, yes, people still do wait for the response, the agreement of parents up until a time that, um, you know, they feel led to to move ahead. So there isn't one one straight answer to that, I would, I think that depending on the situation, it may be quite different uh, in 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 different instances. I hope I answered your question, Charles. All right, I think we'll keep we'll move forward. So. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll move forward. Um, so while what do we what so since we we did talk about discerning God's guidance through making the choice, um, there may be certain times that uh, finding a partner may not be as easy as it is for some people. Okay, it may take a lot more of time. There may be a lot of waiting, a lot of looking out, a um, lot of searching that there is. Um, but what is our stance at that time? What should we be doing? Should we be moping around, feeling depressed and sad that, uh, you know, nothing is working? Or is there is there another response that we are to be imbibing while we are waiting. So scripture shows that we continue to be patient even in affliction. Romans 12, 12 says that be patient in affliction, right? So continuing to uh, 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 have hope that, that keeps you rejoicing and also to um, operate in faith because faith is, is the evidence of things that are not seen. So at the time of waiting, um, you know, not keeping back everything that 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 can be you know taken on because there are times when people who are waiting in marriage um you know step aside everything else you know they keep aside all other um plans or keep away everything that god has given them in their spirit to do uh, right they everything comes to a halt but it is important to continue to do what God has called you to do in that season of waiting. So staying staying occupied and busy with whatever God has entrusted you to do. Maybe it's a job or maybe it's studies, maybe it's uh, um, you know ministry work, maybe it's um, building on certain skills or certain vocation. And at the same time, taking time to uh, to work on yourself, to develop yourself so that, you know, like we spoke about those preparation areas, the first one, to, to become the best you. So doing all of that in faith, knowing that that in, in time, you know, you, there could be a choice that you're going to be making. So it's not a period of sitting around, lazing around and being passive, but it is an active period. Period. It is a time that waiting period is just, is a time of activity and should uh, engage you in the things that God has called you to do. Okay. Now, when we look at marriage, um, we also understand that um, uh, you know the, the misconception that uh, um, you know that the wedding ceremony is the biggest event uh, that 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 you and your fiance would come come to, but the wedding ceremony in itself is only the beginning of uh, what what um, 
you're going to face, you know, you're going to have in life. So uh, even as people prepare, you know, when we talk about preparation, it's not preparing for that specific day. It's preparation for a lifetime. Because uh, yes, there is a lot of things. I mean, you get married once and you want to get married well, right? So that there is, uh, you know, and it is good to plan that and have a, uh, have good things in place but yet not to forget that you know even in the busyness of that preparation there is a preparation of the person the individual the heart um, because even through these you know through preparing for the I've, I've seen especially uh, you know in these in the sessions that we've had with uh, in premarital counseling just them preparing for the wedding really helps them to make decisions together, to communicate openly, to resolve certain conflicts or to resolve certain um, ideas, uh, opinions that may be differing. And that actually comes out in light to know how much more they, there should be preparation for um, you know, the years ahead of marriage. So the, the wedding date, wedding day is an event, but uh, um, the, the, the marriage is for a lifetime. So not getting too focused or too lost in the ceremony or the days that follow or proceed, but to, to, to be preparing yourself to deal with the challenges that can come about. Okay. Now, um, something else that we'd like to look about is um, marriage is is something more than just finding the right person. And I think we've been talking about this over and over again. And uh, as a result, you know, one of the biggest recommendations is never rush into marriage. Take time to prepare and take time to um, look at these the, uh, um, these areas with someone you may find because the excitement of finding somebody and then immediately deciding, say, okay, you know, this just feels right. It just appears right. So then let's just get into it. Uh, I think that's that's a mistake a lot of people do make. But, uh, you know, taking that time to um, establish uh, uh, you know, an understanding of each other, like it says in Proverbs uh, 24, 3 and 4, a home is built on <clears throat> wisdom, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> on wisdom and understanding. And it is with knowledge that the rooms are furnished, right? So uh, taking time to, even if you do find somebody who seems Perfect. You've probably known someone for over years, maybe, you know, 10, 15 years, you'll have grown together, um, uh, you know, over the years. And you may know many things about the person, but actually getting down for a preparation and really talking heart to heart about these seven areas, about your expectations, about what it is you're looking for, what do you desire in seeing a home as the way God has designed it. So be prepared to to take that that time. So something that we do when, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so something that we recommend young couples is to at least take a three to six months time uh, of preparation, uh, you know, before they, they, they uh, fix their dates for marriage. So taking this uh, seriously, all right? Now, what happens, I think one of the certain things that we, we do look at is, is an engagement period. And, and I know this could differ in, in very many cultures that there may be, uh, uh, there may be for some cultures, there is an engagement period that um, moves to a span of a couple of months, or it may be um, a few days, or there may not be a formal engagement. It may just be a word that passes. But uh, you know, even as you are in that period of engagement, there are certain guidelines that um, you know that that we look into scripture to to find out. So the first and foremost one is uh, uh, knowing in knowing and understanding that there is no sex before marriage. So if you look at scripture, uh, Hebrews 13, 4 talks of how you need to honor marriage and to guard the sacredness of the intimacy between man and woman within marriage, right? Or in uh, even Paul talks about it in Thessalonians of how, um, you know, we, we keep ourselves away from sexual promiscuity. So refraining from any form of sexual encounters during the time of engagement is, is something that, uh, that 
that pleases God. Okay, um, that is the rest of uh, marriage to uh, to enjoy um, physical intimacy, uh, and and it is important to keep that um, as a guideline. Um, this this guideline or this standard is higher for those of us who may be in ministry, who are serving your church, who um, you know, who are doing things for kingdom work. So. Um, you know, Paul, Paul tells Timothy that he says, don't let anyone look down upon you because you're young, but be an example to all the other people in your speech, your conduct, your faith, your purity. So it's, it's something that we are called as, as those in ministry, those who are in, in, uh, in, you know, when I think you, uh, I believe that all of us are ministers, all of us are ministers to God, wherever we are, whether we be in a local church or whether be, uh, we be in a, in our workplace, we are we are carrying uh, the the uh, the example of Christ all over. We are carrying His name all over. So we are held in higher standards. So our lives needs to be an example, also because you know, being a person who is of marriageable age, there are so many young. Um, teens or young children looking and watching and learning from you. So ensuring that, um, uh, you know, you stay in being the example that God has called you to be. Okay. So um, even as we're talking about an engagement, uh, also to, to know that what could be some signs that a breakup of an engagement may be uh, inevitable or maybe necessary. So, um, you know, and, and I know that this is also quite, uh, in some cultures, it is quite difficult after an engagement has been arranged or it's been said it's been done. Um, very often to break it up can be a sign of, uh, uh, you know, it, it can it, it can be very socially or culturally very, very difficult. But it is always better to walk into a marriage uh, understanding that, um, you know, there are those those red flags or those signs that have been discussed or that have been uh, worked on. So some of the signs that a breakup may be necessary could be one where there is um, in, in the character of one of the members or one of the persons where there is strong manipulation or if there is abuse, um, if there is controlling, if there is uh, um, uh, a lot of authority authoritative nature if, if that's what's really coming out um you know be uh, be um wise to step away from such a such a relationship or it can be if there is um emotional dependence if the, if there seems to be high emotional dependence on the other person you know um looking for ways to um feel better or maintain themselves um, only in the presence of the other. Our emotional, or our entire dependence should be on the Lord and not be on any individual. So if, if there is um, a sign like that, if there is uh, any time that you find someone being extremely emotionally dependent on on the on you know on the partner that that again is a red flag. Uh, yet again, is um, not taking up responsibilities, not carrying up um, significant responsibilities in life. Maybe it is uh, uh, being careful about finances or being able to uh, uh, stay in a job, maintain maintaining a job or any kind of uh, commitments that were kept you know failing those commitments um that can also create issues when when uh people are not able to hold responsibilities and carry out their own tasks that is given to them or that is entrusted to them or if there are certain differences that you do see if there is a big gap in the way that there is your your calling uh, you know or the the desire or the passion for god or or the fact of you do see differences in the way that you um, you know you desire to do ministry but but uh, but your partner has a different calling in itself or if there is 
if the maturity in growing spiritually is is not uh, as what you see if there are differences if there is a big huge gap in those that's another condition or that's another sign that uh, one needs to take care of and of course if there are any problems within their character be it addictions uh, any kind of uh, um, uh, extra relationships, uh, unhealthy relationships, unhealthy dependence, um, any form of uh, uh, behavioral issues that you may find, that's again another sign. And lastly, uh, is if there is disapproval, strong disapproval of parents and spiritual mentors uh, collectively, you know, when there is a reason that is given, uh, that's again another sign that you need to be uh, you need to take care of if you would like, uh, if there is, there needs to be a breakup in the engagement. Okay. The last portion of, uh, uh, I think someone has a question. Yes, uh, Christopher. Yes, go ahead. Christopher? Yes, can yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Yes, I can. Yes, I wanted to just uh, find out with uh, regards to uh publishing the wedding bands uh is that uh something that came out for, it came out of the i mean is it biblical uh that is one and the second question around that is um has the publishing of the wedding bands has it had the desired effect uh you know uh in, in relation to uh you know uh, ensuring that you know those those two i mean the couple has has uh, um, uh, you know, have I mean have I mean everything is all proper and with these with these bands they have uh, uncovered certain things that uh, you know that uh, that have resulted in uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, I mean the wedding not happening. So just wanted to find out about that. Okay, um, uh, so uh, I may need to check on this, uh, Christopher. I may not be accurate in my uh, knowledge of this, but uh, I don't think this has a biblical um, backing to this. This is more um, in in the stream of having witnesses um, in you know having the presence of very many witness uh, in establishing a covenant so if i do understand it is uh, you know that's that's one of the reasons the second of course it is uh, we are in a social cultural setting uh, to be able to uh, pronounce these bans so that if there are any objections or if there are uh, any um, you know any uh, related struggles or problems that that may be known to some that it can be brought forth to the to the uh, leadership to the pastoral leadership and then be questioned like for example if 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 I understand it, maybe there could be someone else who could probably add to this. But um, let's say you know someone who's wanting to get married is probably already married, but there aren't any records or any um, account of it. So when it is being publicly spoken, pronounced, uh, there is a larger group, uh, a community that hears of it, and if there is anyone, there is an objection, it is brought forth and. Uh, um, you know, the, it, it is seen into. So it does have a cultural, I think it has a cultural backing as well as what I'd mentioned that it is in the presence of witnesses that a, that a covenant needs to be made. So this is my understanding, but let me just, um, I'll put this question up. If there is anything more to this, I shall, I'll get back and, and answer this once again next week. Is there anyone else who would like to add in any details if uh... okay all right so um yeah so uh, the, the next portion that we are just going to be looking at is um uh this the the understanding of being single well, you know uh, uh, we, we've been exploring this about about marriage and how God instructs us and in, in how He's designed it, and what is need what needs to be considered when one needs to be married. Okay, and we we also do understand that this is part of the uh, it is part of a uh, by default 
marriage is a part of the Genesis Commission. And we see that in Genesis 1.28, where he speaks to Adam and Eve and says, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So it is part of that Genesis Commission. However, we understand that maybe in all cases, this may not be the path that everyone needs to do, need, may want to take. And, uh, and it, we just want to provide certain understanding of of what um, what the singleness could mean and when is it that you can make a choice like this. So there are three specific uh, uh, scriptural insights that we we bring about. One is that it's a choice that one makes for the purposes of bringing about the extension of God's kingdom. And we see that written in Matthew 19, 11 to 12. I'll read that out for you. But Jesus said, not everyone is mature enough to live a married life. It requires a certain aptitude and grace. Marriage isn't for everyone. Some from birth seemingly never give marriage a thought. Others never get asked or accepted. And some decide not to get married for kingdom reasons. But if you're capable of growing into the largeness of marriage, do it. So there may be many reasons why a person may choose to be single. But something that Jesus points out over here is some decide not to get married for kingdom reasons or for the work of God. Okay, because they would like to devote their time entirely for God and for pursuing something that God has called them for, and as a result, may may remain single. So, if you're making a choice because you want to extend God's kingdom, uh, you know Jesus says oh, here in Scripture actually allows it and says some people want to do it, and and it's fine. If fine, if you do it. Also, to remember now, going back to what Paul said, you know, we know that Paul was single. And uh, he says that doing so is is a gift. He says um, it it's something that um, uh, that that is a gift. And maybe I, I think we we'll just read that scripture in First Corinthians seven seven to nine and twenty eight. Um, Sometimes I wish everyone was single like me, a simpler life in many ways. But celibacy is not for any everyone any more than marriages. God gives the gift of the single life to some the gift of the married life to others okay so he's what he's stating here is that singleness is something that comes from god uh, an empowering that comes from god and not everyone may may want to follow that path or has the empowerment of being celibate and and absolutely you know it talks about further it is not sin it's not sin um, that, that you get married. So if you look at verse 28, it says, certainly no sin in getting married, whether you're a virgin or not. All I'm trying saying is that when you marry, you take on additional stress in a stressful time. And I want you to want to spare that if possible. So that is, again, a possibility that Paul is talking about. However, saying that if you are being single, you are also taking on that life of celibacy. And that's something only God can empower you to do. And the third thing that, that is brought about in scripture is that it is, uh, uh, it's something that you focus on, on pursuing things of, um, of, of, of God or things that are that are spiritual in nature. So with the responsibilities that marriage has, and you know, if if you just look down on that uh, <clears throat> entire scripture from First Corinthians seven thirty two to to thirty eight, okay, it says of how being married has a lot of uh, it says nuts and bolts of domestic life. Right, so there are a lot of uh, responsibilities that you may have. You may need to, um, you know, work alongside with people, please them. There may be a lot of demands on your time and on your on on your attention. The uh, the time that you spend has uh, has to mean to you know get divided in caring and working with um, each other. However, the the unmarried uh, are spared of these responsibilities. So he says, marriage does bring about this host of uh, responsibilities but uh, but being a, but when you consider a life of singleness it is to focus your attention on on really taking on what god has uh, given to you so it is service back to god and it it also says here there is there's nothing inferior um, and if you look at verse 38 it says marriage is spiritually and morally right 
and not inferior to singleness in any way. Although, as I indicated later, because of the times we live in, I do have pastoral reasons for encouraging sing singleness. So he says that, um, you know, it, it is in it, it has, although it has many responsibilities, it is in no way uh, inferior uh, to what to a life of singleness. OK, so what are some of the things that you would need to keep in mind if you feel you are called to a life of singleness and answering these three um, principles? OK, one is, uh, do, uh, is this for kingdom reasons? OK, that I'm I would want to remain single. Um, do I think that there is an empowerment of God and a strength to remain single and pure for the rest of my life? Okay, is there a specific calling that God has called me to? And what what would I be able to devote um, at this time? What what energies or what time would I uh, would would I devote in serving God? Um, uh, against the desire of having a family uh, um, with you. All right. So, if there is, if th these questions can be answered, you know, you can consider that maybe uh, consider a life of singleness. However, you need to continue proceed to continue to praying and asking God uh, to help to first of all to to help prepare yourself for uh, for a for a life of marriage and as well as to keep yourself um, open to the to the idea of, my, of of marriage okay so we today we spoke about how we can discern god's wisdom we were talking about uh, how um, certain uh, what are certain signs that a breakup may be necessary what do you do while you're waiting for the for for marriage or for a, for a person or you know for finding a person and also what does it what does it mean during the time of your engagement what are some of the guidelines that you may need to pay attention to and lastly we spoke about um, uh, singleness. All right. Uh, we have around eight uh, to uh, seven to eight minutes, uh, and I'd be open for questions if there are any at this part. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, Charles, would you like to give me your question? Charles and Christopher, I think both of you have raised your hands. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes, Charles, I can. Can you? Charles, hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. I can hear you. Charles? Okay, okay. Do you like uh, to ask I'm us a question? Guys. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I'm looking at the last topic that we have done about being single. Yes, I'm, I'm looking. Sorry, at Charles, saying... you're breaking up. Would you please put your question on on the chat? Single and choosing all those. Can't singleness be out of this policy even when when the, the, the person is a servant, uh, a servant of God and the, but they feel desperate and they choose to they decide to stay single because they have not found a mate. Can't it be out of this policy? Okay, I think your question was uh, about would about singleness being as a result of despondency is what I think you said. Was anyone able to hear Charles? I'm not too sure if I heard the right thing. Charles, if you can just put your question up on the chat, that'll be helpful because I'm I don't think I heard you completely.
Uh, Christopher, would you like to ask your question? Uh, till we wait for Charles to put it down on the chat. My uh, okay. for the earlier question I asked. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, so, All right, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, fine. All right. So I think, uh, Charles, what you did ask was, can singleness be out of desperation or out of despondency is, is what I think you asked. So um, uh, in order to answer that, I think number one, mm -hmm. OK, so um, number one is when we choose to be single out of desperation, um, it's, it's almost like giving up on what God one can do and what God has in store for you. And uh, uh, having the faith, having the endurance to continue to wait for his will. All right. So I believe it's the heart that matters on why you decide to be single. Is it that you decide to be single because none has chosen you? And as a result, uh, you know, life circumstances happen in such a way that you are single. But even in the midst of that, uh, knowing that God is sovereign in every event or circumstance in your life, that even he can, he can use the singleness in order to bring about his victory, his purposes, his glory, his direction, his calling in your life. So here, I believe it's the heart that matters. You know, out of the heart comes the issues of life. So as a result, so in no matter where, what life turns up, life often can throw us into many situations, right? But if we are to look um, into God's word, we are to be hopeful, hopeful, um, and be joyful, be patient in afflictions, knowing that, uh, as it says in Romans uh, 8, that all things work together for good. So uh, so has that been taken as a resignation that, you know, you're single because you're resigned to it or taking it as, you know, God's leading into something, something greater or something different, which you can continue seeking for. So I see that singleness should not be in desperation, but it should be as a result of a calling that God has for you. But if let's say if circumstances happen that we seeking God to understand what are those purposes, what has God called uh, you for. Uh, I have a very dear friend of, of ours, um, you know, waited on marriage for many years till he was 46. And, um, and even through those years of waiting, so that's what a good 20 years from a marriageable age of 26 to 46, a good 20 years, um, uh, you know, kept at it, didn't lose faith, kept believing uh, that, you know, that's what God was leading him into, um, did his preparation, kept preparing himself, was open to meeting with people. And, um, you know, uh, that that breakthrough happened at 46. So it, it should shouldn't be as a result of desperation, but it should be as a result of a calling. Is um, is what we also read and 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 learned. I think there's one more question, um, Maxton. Here in South Africa, most people are singles, yet they go out for the lovers secretly. Should we say it is another character of singleness, or just avoiding to be held caring responsibilities? Okay, so um, uh, I think it would be the latter, um, avoiding the responsibilities that come with marriage, because marriage in itself is a commitment to not just, um, of course, to a person, but also being able to fulfill your role as a husband or as a wife and the responsibilities that come alongside with it. So if 
it is done in secret or if it is without um, a desire to get into a commitment, um, I, I would see that that's something that, that isn't pleasing to God. Because God not just develops us in our character, you know, even when when we are married, He develops us in our character as we take on responsibilities, uh, greater uh, things for for the larger issues of the family, working on ourselves through all of that. So, um, yes, if there isn't a commitment, it is to avoid a responsibility, to avoid what um, you know God has called us for, and. Um, going out for lovers secretly again is not. Uh, the scripture tells us, you know, to be uh, to keep away from any kind of sexual promiscuity, anything that keeps us away from knowing God and His um, His will and His plan for us. Uh, so this could be outside of God's plan and God's desire for His people. All right. Okay. Uh, we've come to the end of uh, this hour. We'll uh, thank you for joining in. We will meet uh, um, soon for our next class. Thank you. We'll meet back in 10 minutes um, at 11.02. Thank you. <laughs>